Hi, and welcome to our channel where we create videos and Bible art lessons as visual reminders to help you forget not the Lord. For this watercolor tree lesson, you're gonna need watercolors and watercolor paper. Now I'm not using anything crazy expensive or a fancy artist supplies. I am sticking to kids art supplies for this lesson. And you can use palette watercolors or watercolor from a tube or our favorite which is liquid watercolors or you can even combine all of these which you're gonna see that I'm gonna do these liquid watercolors from Dick Blick and the sergeants you can get at Walmart and Hobby Lobby or Amazon and they're listed in the description below we love the liquid watercolors because the pigment is so vibrant so you're gonna get um, just really pretty color and effects that you can do and they're great for kids and it's an instant satisfaction to use and paint these. You can use them full strength straight out of the bottle or dilute them with water to get a lighter value of color. Because watercolor works with water, you're gonna need to wet your paper. I'm gonna only do the top half of my watercolor paper to make my sky because I have a very bad habit of resting my hands on the bottom section of my paper while I'm painting. And I don't want the water to dry um, before I get down to the land or in the, in the bottom half of this painting. And you can make your sky any color you want. Each morning, God paints the sky a beautiful array of color and it's never the same. When you paint with watercolor, you can layer. It's better to build layer upon layer. So you do not need to go all out crazy with your paint to make your sky, just do light amounts of paint. You can build your color and layer your color. Keep that in mind when you're painting your sky. It's easier to add color than it is to take away. If you do get too much color in a section, wet your brush, clean your brush off, wet your brush, and then brush that over the area. And then you can take a paper towel and lightly soak up that color. Any area that you want to be white or a light tone, don't paint that. Just leave that area blank because white watercolor paint does not do what you want it to do. I want a sunrise, so I am leaving a small circle of shape area without paint. And I'll come back to that section in a little bit and create my sunshine. I'm not drawing anything in particular here in my background. I'm just laying down color, a little bit of shape of color, because I know that I'm going to paint a, a tree in the foreground of my painting and most of this is going to get covered up anyway but I just needed wherever whatever is poking through the tree limbs and will be seen so I'm just gonna throw some color back there when you're painting a landscape things in the distance that's the things really far away from you are going to be smaller less detailed blurry sometimes and more bluish and I'm gonna make a stream of water and it's going to be coming from the background coming towards me so things in the background are smaller so the section of my water my stream will be smaller furthest away from me and as it comes closer to me it's going to get a little bit bigger this kind of looks like a snowy scene right now doesn't it now on the section the section on the left I'm gonna wet that part of my paper um, and start layering in different shades of green. I don't want my grass to be the same color of green. We can experiment with different shades, mixing our green with yellow or mixing green with black or mixing yellow and black into the to create an olive green because grass isn't all the same color. It has highlights, shadows, and every value of green. Don't let your painting dry. Make sure your paint is still wet, that the paper is still wet for your grass area because we're about to do an art surprise. Are you ready? Salt. Yes, the table salt. Go get the salt out of the pantry from your kitchen or the salt shaker and gently sprinkle salt on the areas you would like to add texture to. Look at this. It looks like I did it on purpose. I mean, I did, but I didn't paint that on purpose. That's the reaction 
that salt soaks up the paint. As the salt is drawing in the water, it leaves behind little areas missing paint, which happens to look like texture in your watercolor. I'll let that salt soak up some of that color and I'm gonna go back to my sunshine. I think it needs some rays of light popping through the sky. Now let this painting dry. I did not listen to myself and I went ahead and I painted my tree. But any area of your watercolor paper that is still wet, even if it's damp, it will cause new watercolor to bleed. See there? But I'm not worried about this. I know that I can cover that up. But for your sake, go ahead and let that painting dry. Walk away from it. You can come back to it, give it about 30 minutes to an hour and it'll be dry. When your painting is dry, we're gonna paint a tree next to that stream. When you're drawing or painting a tree, the tree trunk is the thickest part of your tree and your branches that come off that trunk will be thinner and smaller as they move away from the tree. So the further away, a tree branch is from the trunk of the tree, the smaller it will be. I like to think of the letter Y while I'm drawing a tree. Why you ask? Because a Y is a great tool to use when you're making a tree. Let those branches Y off of each other and just continue making Y's and you'll have this amazing looking tree. Let this dry. Step away from the painting, let it dry. Once your painting is dry, you're ready for the next surprise art tool, glue. We're gonna paint with glue. I'm gonna take this glue bottle and I'm going to dab leaves onto my tree branch, into my tree. I'm not drawing leaves, I'm just dabbing. So dab, 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 dab and think how does the leaf look on the tree when they're clustered together, the greenery section is gonna get bigger and just start dabbing glue all over your tree where you want leaves to be. Now don't let this glue dry. Before it dries, you're going to add salt. We're gonna do salt again, but this time you're gonna put the salt on the glue. Now, why you ask? Because we need that salt to stick to our painting and the glue is gonna make it stick. Make sure all that glue is covered with salt. Now let this dry. It's gonna take, eh, it's gonna take an hour or two for this glue to dry, so walk away or leave it for the next day so you can have an art, you can have an art lesson two days in a row. Now, while my glue was dry, I decided to add a little bit more color and a few more details down into the lower section of my paper. And you can do that too. Just don't touch the glue and the salt at the top of your painting. You can add more paint, more salt, more paint, more salt, and just create layers down in the lower section of this painting. Now for the fun part. And we're going to ever so lightly touch an area where there is salt. Watch it. Isn't that fun? It soaks up the paint. So the salt is going to remain on your painting. It's going to add dimension and texture, but it's also soaking up the color 
and it's not touching your paper, it's just touching the salt. So move across all the salt and glue areas on your painting and just give them a little, a little love. Just barely touch it with your wet paintbrush. Once you have sufficiently given the salt color, you can touch up your painting and add details and finish it out just as you like it. And that's it. This painting reminds us of Psalm 1, 1 through 3.